We're going to get to the scripture reading a little bit later on, but you can go ahead and turn in your Bibles to uh, Isaiah chapter 9, so you'll be ready when we do get there. We seem to live in a world where nothing lasts. Things are short-lived. You could go out right now and buy a, a brand new computer for $1,000, $1,500, whatever they cost these days, and in five years, what's it going to be worth? Not too much. It'll be outdated. It'll probably be outdated by next year because the next model will come out. You might be able to sell it on the buy and sell or take it into the MCC thrift store if it still works. Nothing lasts forever. The car that you're driving right now eventually will sit in some wrecker's yard, rusting away. Or if it's like mine, if I've got a truck that's less than two years old, and I'm seeing the first sp spot of rust bubble on the, on the door. These things don't last forever. They will eventually disappear. These bodies that we have, they don't last forever either. They slow down, they wear out. And I read something this week that uh, an older follower of Jesus said, and she put it this way. She said, life begins at 40, but so does bad eyesight and arthritis. Pretty soon, you start telling the same jokes to the same people. You reach down to straighten out the wrinkles in your stockings and realize you're not wearing any. <laughs> in your 20s, you don't care what the world thinks of you. In your 30s, you worry what the world thinks of you. And then in your 40s, you realize the world's not thinking of you at all. <laughs> things don't last forever. The things that are important to us now, the material things, aren't going to be there. Peace is the same way. We strive for peace in this world. We see conflict in different places in the world, and, and the world seems to be seeking for peace. Politicians say that they want to see peace, but the peace that they bring doesn't seem to last either because there will be another war or another conflict. And so I want us to think about what the idea of peace means to us on this second Sunday of Advent, a, a lasting peace, the peace that Jesus brings. The passage that we're looking at this morning out of Isaiah really talks about the, the future kingdom of Jesus, and there will be a kingdom of peace, where that king will rule forever. There will be no end to his rule. And so this morning we're going to focus on Jesus and that kingdom, that ruler who was born on Christmas, whose reign will last forever and ever. That's what the angel that spoke to the Virgin Mary said. He said he was going to, she was going to give birth to a son and, and described him. The angels that came to the shepherds talked about good news. Then that mass choir of angels that showed up to the shepherds proclaimed peace on earth. But centuries earlier than that, long before Jesus was born, we have this, this prophecy from the prophet Isaiah out of chapter 9. So let's read that passage. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden of their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the armies of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniformed, uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They'll be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. 
the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. I want us to think about three things that we we see, three aspects of this kingdom of peace, this rule of peace that we see is is talked about Jesus. The first thing is is that it's a hidden kingdom. There, There are certain aspects when we look at the life of Jesus it was obvious who he was. I mean, he, could, he would heal people. He would raise people from the dead. There were aspects where it was obvious who Jesus was. But there were lots of aspects where, where it was hidden. Not hidden in a way that, that God didn't want us to know who it was. But, but hidden in a way where, where people, human beings, had to discover it for themselves. That it wasn't just handed on a, on a platter to them in obvious ways, but... But they had to discover this, this kingdom. They had to discover who this Jesus was. I mean, the birth of Jesus wasn't announced to the rich. It was announced to, to poor shepherds. <clears throat> it wasn't announced to people who were powerful or, or influential. It was announced essentially to farmers on a hillside. When he was born, Jesus didn't eat... Um, in a fancy palace or a, a stable or, or a, anything fancy, but he, he ate in a stable. He slept in a stable. Years later, when Jesus would lay down his life, it wasn't um, it, his, his, he hid his glory on a cross. No one could have guessed that by looking at this man who was hung and died like a criminal, that this is where God's glory was. And so in lots of ways, the kingdom is a hidden kingdom that we need to discover for ourselves. We need to, it takes work for us to figure it out, to, to figure it out for ourselves, to find meaning in it for ourselves. People look for, for God in all kinds of ways. They look for it in themselves, they look for it in other places, in, in, in nature, and in aspects of because all of creation is God's, it is there. But really, we can only fully understand the kingdom and receive the kingdom when we look at the person of Jesus. When we discover who Jesus is. God's word tells us that, that Jesus is the exact representation of who God is. That when we looked at Jesus, we saw God. And in fact, Jesus said that to his disciples. His disciples asked, God, Jesus, show us the Father. And and Jesus says, you're looking at him. You're looking at God. This is who I am. Don't you know me? And so in the the stories that we focus on at Christmas time uh, of the shepherds and, and, and the birth of Jesus, it all happens in really humble places. It doesn't happen in obvious and, and glor- glorious, glorious ways. It happens in the small ways, in the humble ways. God reveals himself, but he invites us to discover that kingdom of Jesus for ourselves. Then secondly, of course, it's a kingdom of peace. And that passage that we read really focuses on that in a strong way, that that the peace of Jesus is not going to be like the peace of of the world. It's not going to be like the peace of of rulers of this world, of kings and of, of prime ministers and presidents and all those kinds of political things. It's going to be a different kind of peace because it will last for eternity, it says. Every prime minister or president or king or queen claims to want peace for their country. But they're not able to set up peace that will last forever. Suddenly there's war. Suddenly there's, there's recession. Suddenly there's, there's uh, decisions that are made where, where the poor are neglected. We see all kinds of evidences of lack of peace around us in our country and in countries around the world. Even the two, two of the greatest kings in, in history, King David and King Solomon, they had times of, of great prosperity in their, in their country, but eventually it went all down the drain too. It broke out in the Civil War, and we talked last week about how, how the nation of Israel did go through civil war, and they divided into north and south kingdoms, and eventually those kingdoms fell to neighboring nations. Even the most glorious of of kingdoms, of nations, 
will eventually fall because the earth cannot bring us the kind of lasting peace that we so long for, that we so long, that we so desperately need. And so Jesus comes to set up a kingdom that will never end. In the footsteps of, of his ancestor David, in that ancestral line, but it's a kingdom that will never end. When Jesus reigned on, or ruled on the earth or walked on the earth, people really wanted to make him a physical king. In fact, they tried to push him, they tried to pressure him to actually make him king, but he resisted that because that wasn't the kind of kingdom that he was talking about. It wasn't a political king. It wasn't a, a, a physical earthly kingdom that he was talking about. When Jesus talked, and he talked a lot about the kingdom of God, he was talking about a different kind of kingdom. A kingdom that would be an internal kingdom. A kingdom that would be a spiritual kingdom. Where we can experience everything that God has for us, regardless of the, the circumstances around us. Jesus came to bring peace. And the ultimate way that Jesus came to bring us peace was to, to reconcile us to God to deal with the problem of sin that we, we heard talked about already this morning in the youth time. Every human being that's ever been born has this problem of sin. Sin is a real thing. Sin is a, a thing that separates us from God. And so Jesus came to establish his, his kingdom of peace by, by paying the price for that sin, of eliminating that, that sin problem that we had so that we could be reconciled to God, so that we could really experience his peace. And then as we have peace with God, we can start to have peace with each other. The third thing that we see is that it's a chosen kingdom. And that's what makes, one of the things that makes this kingdom a little bit strange. It's voluntary. We don't have to choose Jesus' kingdom of peace. We can choose any other number of kingdoms that are offered to us. It's not a kingdom that you're born into. Most of us here were born in Canada, so we're part of the, the, the nation of Canada. We're citizens of this country. It wasn't a choice. It's just our circumstances. But the kingdom of peace that, that Jesus comes to bring in is not that way. We're not born into it. We were born into the kingdom of the earth, and we have to choose to reject that and accept Jesus and become part of his, his kingdom. We have to choose that way. We have to believe that this, this child who was promised, this, this child who was promised thousands of years ago, actually did what he said he was going to do. That he was not only born, but he also lived and sacrificed himself to pay that price. That Jesus gives me his righteousness because it's not in and of myself. And even though we can't always see the glory of God in obvious ways, it's there in us if we've accepted it. In this world, it's hard to see God sometimes because God's glory can be in some ways overshadowed by all the, the challenging and difficult things in the world. We look at the things that are happening, we look at the news, we read Newspapers, if they still even exist, or online publications or whatever, and we see all kinds of bad news things, and we, we try and find where is the good news in this world. But God has chosen you and I to be bringers of that good news. When you think about it, the, the shepherds, were the first evangelists around. They were given good news, and their immediate response was to go and tell everybody that they knew about that good news. And that's the definition of an evangelist, one who brings good news. The interesting thing that is in our world today is that, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, the Apple Computer Company has evangelists. They actually call them evangelists. So they bring the good news of Apple to the people around them. It's true, that guy, and a guy named, uh, where's his name here? Guy Ko Ka Kawasaki. He was a marketing specialist for it, and he coined this term, evangelist, in the, in the Apple company. And so they would bring people that would, 
to be able to share their excitement and share their experiences with Apple. Well, you know what? You and I have good news that's a lot more exciting than a computer. Just in the same way that they share their experience with, the, with those Apple products, we have the opportunity to share our experience with Jesus. And so as we bring our requests for peace, our praises for, for how we've seen God come through and bring us his peace, we have the opportunity to not only live in this kingdom of peace, but we also have the opportunity to, to bring that good news to people around us. We sometimes get it in our heads that it's a pretty complicated thing. We get the word evangelist in our heads and it, it seems intimidating. It seems scary. It seems like it's, it's something big that we have to do when really all it is is sharing the good news that we have experienced. When we think about how we have experienced Jesus, of how Jesus has been good news to us, of how we are changed people because of, because of our relationship with God through Jesus. And it's just about sharing that, that good news, sharing our experience with people around us. The peace of Christmas is Jesus. The peace of Christmas is the fact that Jesus brought in this kingdom. A kingdom where we can experience peace not just now, but peace that will last forever. May God help us to choose to live in that kingdom daily. And to be loving enough and brave enough to be able to invite others to live in that kingdom with us. Let's pray. Jesus, you are Emmanuel. You're God who came to live with us. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. There will be no end to your kingdom of peace. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for loving us, for seeing our need, and for making the way, for becoming the way. God, as we continue down this road towards the celebration of your birth, Jesus, help us to experience your peace more and more. Help us not to get sidetracked in the busyness in the buying of gifts, in the decorations, in the meals, in the preparation of all that. God, help us to do all those things, but to focus on you and the gift of peace that you've brought to us. And may we live in this kingdom of peace in such a way that, that we have a chance to shine your light to others. In Jesus' name we pray.